everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm meteorologist Alyssa Andrews alongside meteorologist Terry Eliason. And we're here to talk about Hurricane Aline, also talk about the local storm impacts here at home and all things weather right now happening in Boston. Busy day today in yes. the weather office. Very busy. Um, I would say that obviously we have a weather alert up here. Um, we have some rain coming through, a little bit of a heavy rain tonight, but the lead story weather-wise really is Hurricane Helene today. Right. Um, obviously not impacting us here, thankfully, but a major impact expected uh, down in Florida. So why don't you take us through the uh, the latest we have We're just in at 11 a.m. Yep, right now the latest advisory. So Helene is a category two storm and it's projected to make landfall as a category three hurricane. Now that would be just the ninth major category three storm to make landfall in the U.S. since Gosh, in the last 20 years since the very active 0405 season. And as it continues on this latest path heading north, uh, outside of this cone area, of course, the impacts and the damage is going to be far extending. But that is the latest path from the National Hurricane Center. Yeah, and it, this hurricane's a pretty big one. The, the last several we've seen in the Gulf were sort of small in size. This is a very large uh, hurricane for the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see the tropical storm force winds in the yellow there. This is the forecast wind field for Helene extending out several hundred miles, covering almost the entire state of Florida. This is for 5 p.m. this evening, the forecast. And that red area would be where the hurricane uh, force winds are forecast to be. And you can see just going east of Tallahassee, uh, right into that Big Bend area of Florida. Right, and as this moves through, this is why they're calling this, you know, an unsurvivable level of storm surge and winds associated with Helene. Mm. Um, and we are looking at, um, you know, this is why when we have these hurricanes off the coastline, um, the damages and the impacts extend far beyond that cone and that center of low pressure that we've been looking at. And this is why they're saying, you know, heed those evacuation warnings if you can and pay attention to the local forecasts and meteorologists throughout the day. Yeah, and so it's a category two right now, but because of multiple different reasons, first off, the ocean surface temperatures are so warm down there. Uh, you know, you can see uh, near 90 degrees uh, off the southwest uh, coast of Florida and up the upper 80s, uh, you know, right along that track. Uh, so that's just extra energy for Helene. Helene is going to feed off those warm waters and we expect it will probably make landfall. The official forecast is a category three, but it, it's not out of the question. It could strengthen even further uh, right before landfall to a cat four. Either way, a major uh, major hurricane as it makes landfall. Right, and last night actually they, um, the National Hurricane Center did have it going to a category four storm yeah. before making landfall. Hopefully um, it doesn't strengthen to that level, but you're talking about the warm ocean water and the energy. This is quite literally the function of hurricanes. They want to transport warm ocean water from towards the equator and transport it north. So it's kind of doing its job to sort of balance the temperatures. Um, but when it does it, it also leaves destruction mm. and damage in its wake. Yeah, look at all those hurricane warnings are up literally from the Big Bend area of Florida, uh, up through a good portion of uh, central and, and western Georgia, almost extending to Atlanta. There's a tropical storm uh, warning up there in Atlanta, um, but this is widespread impact. So obviously the most devastating impacts will be right along the coastline of Florida near Tallahassee as far as storm surge and wind goes, but um, lots of flooding. Uh, there'll be several tornadoes most likely today down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've already seen some tornado warnings popping off already. And that last graph, that was a good visual visualization. And this one too, of you see the storm path in the cone, but of course the strong winds, this high surf, the mm. uh, flash flood potential extends well beyond that track. Yeah, I mean, Tornado Watch is now up from literally Charleston, South Carolina to Jacksonville, all the way down to Miami. Um, Nearly the entire state of Florida. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty big deal. And again, even if you're not directly in the path, you will be impacted today pretty much anywhere uh, over southeastern uh, portions of the, the United States. And the rainfall is just going to be Incredible. torrential. Yeah. Um, they're talking about, so that little white area there uh, in western... Uh, it's breaking North the Carolina. color charts. Right? It's, yeah. not, it's <laughs> off our charts, literally. Uh, that's never good. Western North Carolina... Some of the southern Appalachians, they're talking one to two feet of rain, um, sort of near Asheville, North Carolina, if you know that area, right along the border with uh, with uh, Tennessee. So that's that would be devastating amounts of rainfall in that area. Yeah, and something to note about this too, what's interesting is we're talking about where the hurricane is currently and how it's going to make landfall late tonight um, off the coast of Florida. But look at where we did break the color chart on that north of Atlanta. So the some of the heaviest rainfall totals from Helene could actually be 
far away mm. from where it actually makes landfall after it's gone over uh, dry land and has lost its warm ocean source of energy and it continues on to bring in torrential rainfall and flash flood threats. Yeah, so exactly. So it may be transitioning from a tropical system to something we call extra tropical. It might be losing some of its wind, but certainly not losing its punch. And I'm guessing that some of those higher totals are probably due to some orographic lifting over the uh, Appalachians there, just exacerbating the situation. So I, I think some of the worst scenes we're gonna see other than the storm surge down in Tallahassee area are from the flooding inland rainfall uh, totals from, from Helene. But storm surge is probably potentially one of the most important factors here and perhaps the most deadly. 15 to 20 foot storm, storm surge possible just to the east of the track. I mean, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's hard to even picture what a 15 it, to 20 foot It really stir. is to, to visualize that. And um, and this is why they're saying, this is actually part of what's why they're saying this is an unsurvivable mm -hmm. storm surge threat. Because think about, gosh, what can you stack? You know, uh, I'm five foot six and <laughs> a lot of storm surge, a dangerous and deadly storm surge could certainly be five to seven foot. Easily. Storm surge, and we're talking 15 to 20. So this hard to even imagine a 20 foot, and, and we're not necessarily saying one particular wave. Storm surge is really a, it's a sort of a, a um, mounting of the waves. It's, it's almost like a wall of water that comes in when you combine um, the wind with the um, with the oncoming waves. And you know, again, this this particular uh, demonstration is talking about 12 feet and showing a home sort of near the coastal. I mean, we're talking 15 to 20 feet. So anybody that's living right along the coastline there, east of the Tallahassee area, um, again, I think that's why the, the mandatory evacuations uh, certainly well warranted for this one. Right, and I mean, then you've got severe wind whipping that around mm -hmm. after, far after uh, this moves through. So that's down there. Uh, luckily, it does stay far away from us. At least yeah. that path does kind of veer off uh, to the west a little bit before it can impact us because this is a totally separate system we're talking about. Yeah, and it seems like most times when there's a hurricane that hits, just over the years, when there's a hurricane that hits parts of, whether it's the southeast coastline, the Gulf, we almost always end up with the remnants up here. Yeah, at least a little bit of something. And this is one of those times where it appears as though we're going to, well, we will escape, uh, actually escape the remnants of it. Um, you can see the, the current radar down there just off the west coast of Florida. That's pretty impressive looking. The, the center, the eye circulating around um, has the look of something that could continue to strengthen, um, you know, in the next couple hours. But you can see up in Boston, it almost it looks like it's all part of one system. But really, the rainfall that's coming for us today is just from a regular old frontal boundary. Just old mid-latitude <laughs> stuff going on here, luckily yep. for us. And what's going to happen is, so Helene's going to move up into sort of the Mississippi River Valley, that down there in the, the inland southeastern parts of the United States, and just kind of sit and spin for a while because a big old area of high pressure is going to sit over us and protect us for a little bit. Um, but anyways, back here at home, if you're going out this afternoon or this evening, we can't expect some rain. Yeah, this is why we have the next weather alert issued for today. So we're expecting um, these rain showers we're seeing right now to become more widespread. And even later on, late afternoon, early evening, um, we could even get some thunderstorms popping off. We could see a line of storms developing. So what we're looking at right now is more of the widespread, lighter rain. You know, some of our weather watchers have sent in reports of less than a tenth of an inch of rain uh, so far from their locations. And we're expecting that to increase. Even in the Boston area, we could pick up easily over an inch of rain. It's certainly possible. Um, so we're going to continue to watch this, but that's the that's where the line of storms could potentially develop. Yeah, so I think most of what happens during the afternoon is just spotty showers. This line that you're seeing, sort of a broken line of showers and downpours, is forecast to come through, sort of push from north to south through southern New England between, say, about 7 p.m. and midnight. And you can see as we advance along, it comes through. This model has it coming through Boston between 8 and 9. South Shore around 10 o'clock, um, down towards the Cape around midnight. So that's probably our best chance at seeing any real, maybe a rumble of thunder, maybe some localized flooding, some some ponding on the roads briefly. Again, it'll be a, a probably a 30 to 60 minute heavy downpour and then it moves on. Yeah, and it, and it moves on to a much nicer weekend, luckily for it, us. It, really it does, and we'll take it, absolutely. The, so this model showing some rainfall totals, I wouldn't take it too literally because uh, if that heavy band does make it down to the south shore in the cape those totals will probably be higher yeah. but easily could see half inch to an inch plus uh, across most of the area today
and the weekend. Let's let's move on to some nicer so things. So much better, yeah. Yes. Temperature's warming up too a little bit, so I like to see that because, you know, we it was like we went from the three weeks, the consecutive non-measurable rainfall at the airport. It was dry, it was sunny, temperatures were in the 80s. It was mm -hmm. almost kind of like, all right, it's getting a little hot. It's, it's September, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. And now, then it, it was like we didn't really get a nice, easy transition into fall. It was just kind of bam, like temperatures. That's kind of how it works here. The yeah. seasons don't typically transition calmly. It's almost right. like you go from like summer to fall in an instant. Turn on a dime. And as we know, you go from winter to summer almost in a right. dime. You know, spring is usually like, what just happened? You, know, exactly. you get some allergies and then all of a sudden it's 90 <laughs> degrees. Um, but yeah, what a weekend for, and again, this is prime time up north for fall foli foliage, oh, for yeah. apple picking, so. Perfect timing to see those temperatures bounce back a little bit into the 70s, because you know, yeah. the 60s was a hard transition <laughs> to get to after the nice summer we had. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think that all the uh, orchards around the area are gonna be mm -hmm. celebrating this fall forecast. Uh, literally, uh, if, if you're lucky enough to have tomorrow off or uh, if you're thinking about this weekend going out to one of the many farms in the area, I mean, really just perfect weather. I mean, Ideal. There, yeah, I mean, Ideal. there may be a few more clouds around. It's not going to be totally sunny the whole time, um, but I mean, you know, hard to complain about 70 to 75 degrees and partly sunny skies for the last weekend of September. Oh yeah, end of September, if you don't have to layer up and bundle up to do all the apple picking and looking at the pumpkin patches, this is, this is pretty good stuff. Do you have any that. fall plans for the weekend? I need to make some. You do? I need to make some. You do need to make some. Wait, it's my birthday, I do have plans. Oh my goodness. I mean, That's I don't right. have plans, but Okay. It's gonna, I'm Ho gonna like. Hopefully somebody's making plans for you. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, we'll uh, see. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually myself, I'm thinking about heading there and uh, there's an Oktoberfest up at Wachusett oh, uh, Mountain gosh. Brewery. So what a weekend for something like that. I think there's Oktoberfest going on. I think there's one in Charlestown. Uh, I, you, you Google it and they're all over the place. This is one of the, the big weekends for stuff like that. Um, so here's something very interesting. Comet, you wanna try to say that? I, <laughs> I don't either. No. <laughs> no, no. There's a comet. It starts with a T. Yes, Comet T dash Atlas. There we go, um, Comet T. Anyways, so there's uh, this comet that's uh, it has an 80,000 year orbit, uh, basically around the Earth and our solar system. And this this weekend, it's making its closest pass. It's at perihelion, we call it, with the sun. So it's closest pass by our sun. Um, and so scientists and astronomers think that we may be able to catch a glimpse of this comet. Um, in the early morning hours, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So very low on the southeast horizon. And it's, it may not look quite as bright and distinct as it does in our graphic there. We hope it does. Um, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? It would be nice. If we can get rid of the cloud cover. Yes, a um, but they're calling it a, a, a rare opportunity for a naked eye comet. In other words, like a, a comet that can be seen with the naked eye. So if you have a clear view of the southeast horizon, it's gonna be just a few degrees above the horizon. So you really need to see the whole thing. Um, I will try to go see that because it is cool when you can actually see it and not just take a picture and it's like, oh, there it is. It really Because exactly. a lot of my Aurora experiences have been very much like mm -hmm. take the picture and you don't really see it in person with yeah, the naked eye. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, this is a rare chance and we'll have to see. We'll get a better idea, obviously, tomorrow, uh, you know, if we're going to be able to scientists. It, the comets are tricky. Being able to see them, it, it doesn't take, it's, they're, they can be blurry and of course it's right. many, many million miles away. So. But the hope is, is that for several days, and you have to get up, this is right before sunrise each morning. So okay. Friday through Monday morning, uh, if you get up a half hour to an hour before sunrise, again, clear view of the southeast horizon. If you have no clouds, uh, there's a pretty good shot at this. Ooh, I'm gonna get a chance. Uh, what do you, I mean, when you think about it, what a year for astronomical oh events around here. Oh my gosh, you can't top I mean, the eclipse. The so. solar eclipse, the <laughs> northern light, probably the best northern light show we've yeah. seen in decades. Oh, that was awesome. Um, we even had a couple of meteor showers in there and now maybe a comet. And, and one of the, there was one picture from that time period from um, the meteor showers and the auroras. It was all in one shot. Somebody got oh, yes. a shooting star, um, the auroras, and uh, then I think two of the planets were visible, yes. like Venus and in Jupiter, Insane. we're visible and all in the one shot. I think yeah. I believe it was on the South Shore. Yeah, that um, that I remember that picture. Um, that's something that just may never happen again. I mean, and, incredible. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I think we covered it all. Uh, great weekend coming up here. But just as a reminder, uh, the, the main story today is Hurricane Helene. Uh, Eric will be in tonight uh, at five, six, eight, and eleven, tracking the very latest. Um, and again, we hope. It doesn't strengthen significantly, but it could certainly get to a three, maybe a category four uh, by the by tonight at, at landfall. Yeah, certainly possible. And Eric will have the latest update on that and the latest timing and, and tracking of Helene. So if you're if you've got folks that live down there, or if you have if your travel is taking you down there, you know, stay safe. Yes. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of. Uh, 
delays, flight delays. We have our reporters on that at Logan tonight, but um, stay safe and we'll keep you updated. Have a good one.